Hello, I'm Dr. Miller, Math Magician. I'm here to teach you how to study and learn and retain what you learn and become creative. And I'm going to use the magic square as a paradigm for this. So what I'd like to begin with is three different magic squares. First, I'm going to start off with the five by five. And what I do is follow a set of rules. Move on a right diagonal, when off the board, move to the opposite side, and block, move down one. So let's begin by putting our number in the middle square. Okay, so I move on my right diagonal, off the board, to the opposite side. Continue moving on my right diagonal, off the board, to the opposite side. And now we reach our first block. I can't put the 6 there because the 1 is there already. So I drop down 1. Continue along. 7, 8, 9 off the board. Drop down 1. Move up in the diagonal. Off the board. Move to the opposite side. And now I come to another block. So I move down 1. And I continue moving up on this right diagonal until I get to a corner. And when I'm in a corner, I discover that my off the board does not work. So I'm going to consider this a block. Move on a diagonal. Off the board. 19, 20, a block again. So I drop down one, continue on a diagonal, off the board again. Off the board, and now I've completed my magic square. And these numbers all add up to 65 in the horizontal, in the vertical, and along each of the major diagonals. Now what we would like to do is to move on to a more complicated magic square, a 10 by 10 magic square. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this magic square here as the model. We're going to use the same movement, but instead of moving, putting one number down at a time, we're going to put two numbers down at a time, or four numbers down at a time. So I put these on pre-marked cards so that I, don't, I can have the numbers written e equally. But we need a scheme for deciding how to put these numbers on. And so what we have is we have three ways that we can put our numbers on. Either as an X, one, two, three, four. As a Y, which is a reverse U, one, two, three, four. Or as a Z, which is a forward U. And we've learned from analyzing these numbers that we're putting numbers in the vertical direction. We're going to have two X's and a Y to start, and then we finish the magic squares off with Y or Z. On the vertical, it turns out we need two Y's for EX, and still one Y for each Z. So, if we want to follow these rules, basically what we would do is first put in all of our Z's in the bottom row. So a Z goes here, and then we look at the diagonal. In the diagonal we have our y's, and we keep putting our y's in, leaving the top square untouched. And we do this for both diagonals. Now, we go back to our vertical thing, and we find that in this case here, that what we want to do is to uh, have two x's in there. So I have two x's there, I put a y here and a y here. An X here, an X here, I'm okay. Two X's here, a Y to complete this out. One X, one X, two X's again, and Y's to complete it out. So that's basically the pattern that I'm going to use to put my numbers up. And in doing this, I'm going to be able to get a 10 by 10 magic square. So let's do the same thing we did before. We start in the middle. One, two, three, four. Off the board. 
This is in the Z direction, so it's a U, U, 5, 6, 7, 8. We now move into a, a Y zone, so this is going to be our reverse U. 9, 10, 11, 12. We're off the board, so we move to the other side. 13, 14, 15, 16. We're still in a Y zone. We take our next set of four numbers. 17, 18, 19, 20. And now we've reached our first block. So we drop down one and we're in an X zone. So an X pattern, 21, 22, 23, 24. We continue on our diagonal. We're still in an X zone. You can look at the box here to see what's happening there. Um, 25, 26, 27, 28. We're still in the next zone up here. 29, 30, 31, 32. And now we're off the board, dropped down to the bottom, and we're now in a Z zone. 33, 34, 35, 36, a U. We now move up on a right diagonal. Takes us other to the opposite side. 37, 38, 39, 40, I review, reversed you because we're in that Y direction. We hit a block, so we drop down one, a U, 41, 42, 43, 44. We move back into the Y area, 45, 46, 47, 48. Continuing up the line, 49, 50, 51, 52. 53, 54, 55, 56. A reversed U, and now in the X zone again. 57, 58, 59, 60. Off the board, a block, so we drop down one. 61, 62, 63, 64. Off, over. 65, 66, 67, 68. We move up, we drop down. 69, 70, 71, 72, our U. Back in the Y direction. 73, 74, 75, 76, back in the next direction, 77, 78, 79, 80, a block, we drop down into the Y zone, 81, 82, 83, 84, our backward view, we continue up here, 85, 86, 87, 88, off the board, over to the other side, which is our X, we now Continue up, and we're now at 93, 94, 95, 96, and we come down here, and we have 97, 98, 99, 100. Now, if you take a look, you can see that this pattern matches it. Here's my two X's here, my two X's here, my two X's here, my two X's here, and my two X's there. These will all add up to a 505 in the various directions. Okay, to illustrate this in more detail, let's go to one more level of complexity, and that is the 14 by 14 magic square. Now let us do the 7 by 7 magic square, which when we break it into halves like we did with the 5 by 5, we get a 14 by 14 magic square. And now we're going to show how we're building up the complexity by building upon the basics. So we're going to use the same concept that we did with the 5 by 5 magic square. In this case, what we find is that when we put our two x's and y, we then have two y's and z's in order to make it 7 by 7. So the first thing we do, the rule was put our z's at the bottom. Okay, so those bottom two rows get z's in them. And then, the next thing we said was to move along the diagonals with the y's. So diagonal, y, 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 be the last position for an x, the diagonal. And then what we said, we want to have two x's in the vertical. So we put our y's here, x, x, y, y, Fill in here, x, x, y, y, x, x. We have to skip over here, three y's now. And that's now the pattern that we're going to have for the 14 by 14 magic square.
which this time is going to add up to 1379. Now, I've added an extra addition to this, if you look closely, and that is, I circle the first number in the box, the 1. Okay, and now I move off the board, come down into the Z direction. Okay, move, continue moving on a right diagonal. Okay, and you'll notice they're skipping in groups of 4. 1 plus 4 is 5 plus 4 is 9. And now we get into the Y area, and notice that we start on the opposite side. And the reason why I did this was to reduce the chances of making an error. And now we get to our first block. Okay, and notice 25, 26, 27, 28. So we drop down one. 29, 30, 31, 32, move over, move up, and as you can see that once we've got the swing of it and the pattern, that it's easy to do. Now my concern has been in terms of making errors. So I could easily write the numbers in the wrong direction, and when you're doing this, and you're not going to pre-do the numbers like I've done, when you do your little square in here, what you will end up doing is writing your numbers like this. So starting off 1, 2, 3, 4, and then you move up and you drop down, and since this is a Z, it would be 5, 6, 7, 8. And then moving up again, this would be still a Z, so it's 9, 10, 11, 12, Y, so now we start on this side, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, and you can see we are matching the numbers that we have, but I have often made a mistake by putting a Y as a Z or a Z, or forgetting to do an X pattern. Now I forgot where I left off, but here it is, 36. We're in the white zone again, or the X zone. Um, 37, 38, 39, 40. 41, and you can see why I put in the corner, because I would tend to look at that corner most of the time. Okay, coming over here, 45, 46, 47, 48, the backward U. We come up here, and we put this in, 49, 50, 51, 52. Okay. And at this particular point in time, I see that I have made a mistake. Okay, so, um, can I correct my state? mistake quickly. Okay, so one of the things which I've observed right here is that, and I will stop for a minute. I've made a mistake. Well, if I go through carefully, what I will have discovered is that when I was coming up through here, 30, 29, 30, 31, 32, I put this in the wrong place. It should have been over here. Okay, 33, then I have to jump to 37. And now what I see is that I have a block, so this would drop down one, 41, 2, 3, 4, and 45 here was in the wrong place. So I put it up here, I come over here, the 49 is here. I now pick up my numbers, and I bet 50, 53, 54, 55, 56. I'm off the board, come down, 57, 58, 9, continue in the blue region. And you can see why the color marking ahead of time helped me out because I wouldn't have found the error when I was in the wrong zone. Block, drop down one, continue up. And I seem to be moving along fine at this point in time. And finally, I get to my last four numbers. 
193, 194, 195, and 196. Whoops, I made a mistake in there. Now, what you have, you notice I've made mistakes, and the key thing is in mathematics is to be able to find those mistakes. So as a result, doing preparing ahead of time, I can see what happens and how to correct those mistakes. Now the other thing that I've done, which, you, which I can't do on the board here, is I do this on an Excel worksheet. And so I can do a summation of the columns, and I can see that they will add up to 1379 along the major diagonals, vertical, and horizontal. And what happens is, if I put the numbers in the wrong place, I will not get that sum at the bottom. And usually I can find two places that are in error and come over and see that what I probably did is put a Y in as a Z or a Z in as a Y. So the other lesson that we learned from this is that in doing mathematics, mis making mistakes are part of the problem. And in the studying process, we have to learn how to set up a problem to prevent us from making those mistakes. So let us summarize what we've done here. What we've done is we've learned a pattern. We've tried to learn the explanation for that, which I haven't shown you completely, so we can understand how things operate. And then what we have to do is organize it so that we can correct the, the problem when we make mistakes. In doing this, You'll notice one other thing is I was able to put these things up fairly quickly. And part of that is because of practice. That is really what makes the difference. So in order to become good in mathematics, the process that I've gone through here will make it easy to solve problems, correct errors, and will allow you to remember what you've done. So good luck and try some more complicated ones. Why don't you try the 18 by 18 magic square? where you have three rows of Z's at the bottom. Thank you very much for listening.